on my neck, still all on my chest. Standing on the jet ski, you can never test me. Do me on the coast of my feet, brighter on my base, it's brighter on my body. I just wanna kick it like a ride. I got too much work to do, I'm sorry. What's up people, it's Caleb here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to this day in the life. Today, in this day in the life video, I wanted to take the opportunity to speak about some of the technology that I've had to learn and understand on my journey as a cloud security engineer. Through various jobs, there's certain things that I've had to pick up, learn and really understand to be able to work in this role as a cloud security engineer. And in this video, let's talk about it. But I also want to show you guys a little bit of what it's like to be me. I love these day in the lives because it gives me the opportunity to show you guys that I'm actually a real person. Like I'm actually a human being and not an AI. So I really hope you guys enjoy this video and get that combination of education and entertainment. But I know for me, it wouldn't be a real day in the life if there was no Teams call. One sec. Caleb, Jacob, what's up, bro? I mean, it's really great to see how you're doing right now. You've been doing such a great job in the team. I've just been watching you, bro. You've really grown since that time you were an intern and used to jump on calls and literally sleep through everything we were talking about. Groups, we've been ensuring that we cover the ports that they need to use and we block any other ports which are untrusted. We've also been working on an MFA project at this new company. Like now I see you working on so many different things and really taking the lead on stuff. So cool, bro. So tell me a little bit about what you've been working on recently and tell me a bit about what you're learning as well. It'll be really interesting to understand what you're doing in the early stages of your career in this industry. Yeah, man, I've been working on so many different things recently. One of the things I've been learning about and learning to use are the different seam tools. Like I've been learning a lot about Splunk and also a lot about Azure Sentinel. And also the stuff I've been working on, I've been using Microsoft Intra ID quite a bit to manage identities and other things of that nature. Another thing I've been working on is cloud migration. I've been learning how to implement and manage cloud migrations for servers, and desktops. Moving them from the on-premise or physical to the cloud is one thing that I'm really excited about that I almost forgot to mention and that is that two weeks ago I passed my AZ-104 as your administrator's exam. I'm so happy about that. It took me months to study but I finally passed and now I have my AZ-104 certification. Jacob this stuff is so amazing. It's great to see how you're progressing how you're learning and I'm so excited to see the whole journey of your career. Thanks so much for sharing that with me and and I really gotta go now but I'll catch you later okay? Alright take care. See ya. Bye. Okay. okay so now let's talk about some of the technology. As you guys know the cloud is so broad and there's lots of different technologies involved in different parts of the cloud like there's development involved and there's DevOps involved and there's infrastructure involved and so on. So as you'd expect, the role of a cloud security engineer will differ greatly between each security engineer. Just the disclaimer that what I mentioned in this video is my personal experiences and the stuff that I've learned through my journey working in this role. And as you know already, throughout my career so far of two years, I've been focused on Microsoft technologies. So mainly with the cloud, that would be Azure and Microsoft 365 products and services. And so one of the first things that I had to learn in this space, which was really important for my journey, was MFA and conditional access. So when we talk about MFA, what are we talking about? Now we've all heard of multi-factor authentication and if you haven't heard of it, you've used it. Multi-factor authentication is when you use more than one method of gaining access into a device or an account. For example, when you log into your Gmail account, you put in your password as one form of authentication and then it asks you to verify that is your account by sending a message to your YouTube on your phone and telling you to authenticate there as well. That's two modes of authentication and it's multi-factor authentication. Now there's a very manual way of activating this for individual users in Microsoft 365. And this was the traditional manual and early method of activating MFA on 365 accounts. But Azure has a feature called conditional access and is now under Microsoft Entra ID. Conditional access was one of the things that I had to learn to be able to do that. In the early stages of my career, I worked for a small company which worked for other small and medium sized companies and did their IT for them. And one of my roles was activating MFA 
for the whole company. So activating MFA for companies through conditional access and ensuring that users have a smooth transition into this was one of the things I did in the early stages of my career. Okay, there's loads more to go for. I don't think I'm gonna get through everything in this video, but that's one of the things. And another thing that I'll mention is Intune. So what is Intune? Microsoft Intune is a device management system, which simplifies the management of devices across a large estate. And some of the things I had to do was to create policies for devices to make sure that all the devices are compliant and managed in a way that an organization expects. So also use Intune to push out new applications and application updates to a whole company. Okay guys, there's so much more to go through and I wanna make this video a little bit more about my life. So I'm not gonna go through everything that I've learned, but one last thing that I wanna mention is the use of PowerShell. Now, PowerShell is the command line commonly used with Azure and 365 technology and Microsoft technology in general. And I've used PowerShell in loads of different little bits and projects that I work on, but I won't say it's something that I've mastered yet. Now I know loads of engineers who know PowerShell off head and they type in commands as if they're typing a Word document. And so far in my career, I can only say that whenever I needed to use PowerShell, it's mostly stuff that I've Googled. I do have a really good understanding of how the commands are placed and how to use them. Now I'm currently upskilling myself in PowerShell, doing courses online to help me improve my PowerShell skills. But it's also important for me to use whatever I'm learning on a day to day. And, and I definitely have the opportunity to do that. A lot of the things that I deploy and work on in my role, there is an option of the way you do it. And this is very common in the cloud. Now, at the basic level, a lot of the times you'll be doing things in the console or the portal. So you have the Azure portal where you go in, you click things on the user interface, and it's pretty straightforward and there's no code involved. Now for Azure, pretty much everything that you do on the console, you can also do in PowerShell. In fact, PowerShell has even more capability than what you can do in the console. So I think a goal for myself is whenever I'm trying to implement something on the console, maybe some new configuration, or I'm trying to create a new virtual machine, my goal is to go ahead and do that in PowerShell instead, so that I'll have a practice of actually working on these things on PowerShell, and I can get that consistency of using PowerShell going, then it can really stick in my memory, and I'll have a real ease about working on this stuff. Okay, that's enough tech talk. This is a day in the life. Let's get back to my day in the life. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys have watched my last video. And in that video, I got some valuable advice from Ali Abdal himself. And he said, Walking in nature, weirdly, like being around trees and greenery and stuff has a measurable effect on people's yeah. stress levels. For me, what I find is when I'm feeling stressed, again, lowering the bar, taking things a little bit less seriously, because at the end of the day, it's not that, most things are not that deep. Funny enough, this is something that I do quite often. And honestly, he's right. This is something that definitely calms me. I love to take a walk or be in nature. And I just feel really relaxed when I'm outside relaxing or walking in amongst the trees. It's something that really relaxes and calms me. Now, there are a lot of people who ask me and who wonder how I managed to do a full-time job and do YouTube content along with all my other commitments in life. Honestly, I don't even know how I do it. Doing content whilst full-time is not easy, but I do it because I really enjoy it. But although working in cloud and as a cloud engineer or cloud security engineer is really fun, taking some time away to just focus on making the best content on the tech industry, something that I'd really enjoy doing. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, we just hit 10,000 subscribers. So thanks so much to everyone for subscribing. And if you haven't subbed and you're not amongst the 10,000, you know exactly what to do. Okay, now it's time to head out. Guys, thank you so much for watching this day in the life and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.